Not to be broadcast is brought to you by Vibe.ng. Right, asking you, yeah. where did you have the, the budget line in 2019 where you derived that power to spend that money? That's the question. I'll, 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 I'll provide that answer for you. Do I have some peace between you and my enemies? If I do, they will think I'm scared. Continue. You think they are wise? So, there has been quite some drama within the Niger Delta Development Commission, NDDC, and the plot keeps thickening. So here's an abridged summary of the saga. President Buhari, in October 2019, ordered the creation of an interim management committee to check the NDDC following very many complaints about the commission's operations and credibility. He also ordered that a forensic audit be carried out on the commission. It is said that over $40 billion, I'm going to repeat that figure, $40 billion has passed through the NDDC since its inception in the year 2000, with very, very little to show for it. Apparently, the first managing director of the Interim Managing Committee, Dr. Joy Nunye, accused the minister of the Niger Delta Affairs, God's Will Akpabio, of trying to rope her into some shady dealings as soon as she was appointed into office. She said he tried to make her swear an oath of secrecy, tried to use her to displace certain people who were not dancing to his tune, and she even alleged that he sexually harassed her at some point. Nobody makes any payment in NDDC without God's Will Akpabio's um, approval. When we first came to NDDC, on the day of going for the inauguration, he told me in the car that Madam MD, if you don't do what I say, the same pen with which I used to sign your letter, it will be the same pen that I will use to remove you. He came to Port Harcourt two days after the inauguration. He said the first thing I should do is to make sure I change the dollars I should remove Mr. Kaltungo from being legal and send him on compulsory retirement, that we cannot have a northerner be the head of the legal team, of the legal unit. I said, I can't do that. I do not have the powers. He said, I should remove all the other directors that refused to take his instruction during the time of Mrs. Um, Aguagaga, that was the predecessor before I came. So he came also with a draft, which I've submitted, with a draft um, letter that I should write and put it on my letterhead, implicating Senator Mobushi for collecting contracts in NDDC. I told him that I will not, I'm a lawyer, and that whoever alleges must prove and guess what? Akbabio never signs any documents. He will always refuse to sign, but he will tell you to go and commit the fraud. For instance, he told me to go and raise a memo and give an emergency contract for flood victims. He wanted me to take an oath. He has denied that, but I want to say today, he told me up to three times until we had a reconciliation meeting at the villa in the house of Mr. Sadiki Abba, who is the SA to the President on Domestics. In that meeting was Alaji Meikano. He said the only condition is that oath. And I will never take the oath from him. So he said he was going to remove me. In February 2020, the President reshuffled the IMC cabinet, replacing Joy Nunye with Professor Keme Bradikumo Daniel Day, who is the talk of the internet right now following a dramatic display at the panel that was set up to probe the mismanagement of the commission. So while the panel was ongoing, Ponde slowly became unresponsive, which attracted the attention of, you know, some of the people present and they started trying to resuscitate him. But did he really faint or was he just trying to stall the procedure? Because the House of Reps Speaker Bajamiala has now exempted him from appearing before the committee, saying that his written response will be used instead. I honestly think it was an act because the way he responded as soon as some guy stuck his finger into his mouth and tried to give him some, some form of CPR was super, super hilarious. 
Anyway, the panel took an absolutely different turn when Godzilla Pabio began to implicate the same members of the panel that were interrogating him, saying that they were indeed active recipients of some of the contracts from the NDDC. You so, were a member of uh, the NDDC and a lot of... Uh, wait, you were a member of the NDDC in the 8th Assembly uh, and are you telling me that lots of jobs were awarded to you as a no, member? No, this is a problem. That's why I said you yeah, must... you change. have the right to accuse people. Then you why must, can't you bring, it, can bring you, up can you people that... To me? One of the chairmen if also, you were not awarded the contract... Then why are you coming here that you are aware that you are a member of the NDDC and lots of contracts were awarded to may you? I, may you I, said I'm not, I'm not aware. I'm telling may, you that. May, bring may, up those things. May I inform my honourable sister that that is why we have to change uh, honorable member, honorable, honorable Mr. Peach, it's okay. That is okay. If I've been honest, that panel was an absolute show of shame and many Nigerians agree to that fact. In fact, everything that has to do with politics in Nigeria is a show of shame. For instance, why was Ibrahim Magu released after all the evidence that they found against him? Many people are now tying everything to Buhari, saying that he appointed all the people who are currently being accused of corrupt practices. And honestly, we cannot blame them for this conclusion. What are your thoughts on this matter? Where are we exactly heading to as a country? And do you guys think that this can be fixed at the polls in 2023? Please join the conversation in the comment section below. For more sizzling gist and interesting trends, kindly follow us across all our social media platforms on vibe.ng.